And everybody, Summer Asia with the Brass and Management, just after 3 30 here on a Wednesday night, a sell off Wednesday night. So, very quickly, stock and market lovers, before, 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 before we begin, let me tell you what we're going to talk about tonight. I want to talk to you about uh, RSP, uh, uh, QQ, EW. I'm going to give you an actual strategy. I want you to, when you walk away from this video tonight, you're going to have absolute. Uh, positively you're going to have a, a buying and a selling strategy whether you choose to follow it or not or adapt it and make it your own that's up to you but it's important for me that these videos are absolutely practical that they're just not a rehash of what happened in the markets that you're absolutely gaining some form of knowledge to think about and and it's my hope uh that helps you uh maybe the next trading day or or even if you're not actively trading just to be able to have the situational awareness to know where we are in time and space in the markets and to be able to critically think through that stuff. And so we're going to get into that here. And I'm going to give you both a daily and a weekly strategy. I'm going to give you the heads up, right? I'm going to get, I'm going to show you the free indicator that gives you the heads up that things are about to go haywire. And then uh, maybe if we have some time, we'll do an Amazon drill. Uh, but before we start all that, listen, Stock Nerds Market Lovers. Any questions, concerns, comments, take umbrage with anything that I'm saying always. Tim at Regressive.com. If you want to talk to the folks that make all the buying and selling decisions in the portfolios, what goes in the watch list, what, what gets extracted from the watch list and gets put in the portfolio, what gets sold in the portfolio. Look at Don, Alex, and Hunter. They are more than happy to talk to you. Listen, the thing that makes this different than every other uh, every other firm in the free world is that, one, we're not in a strip mall, and two, uh, we're accessible. When you go to stripmalladvisor.com and you want to talk to somebody, especially on a day like this, it's always plausible deniability because they have you back to you in what, 15, 20 mutual funds, all with 15 or 20 different managers, if they're not just house funds. And they're, if you're not happy with that performance, what they're going to do, they're just going to tell you, uh, well, we'll switch funds. We'll get a different manager. And it's never, ever strip mall advisor's problem. It's always the mutual fund manager. And so, look, you want to talk to the strategist right here. It's a whole shop of people doing strategy 855-732-5932 always here for your emails and calls talk to america's fiduciary right here at danny stewart let me tell you something especially as we get to the year end here with all the significant changes coming to tax code social security uh, folks rightfully so thinking that their their uh, social security and whatever income they have isn't going to be able to meet the needs of inflation and and a whole bunch of other stuff going on Danny is here to help you, especially um, if you feel like you might have gotten jilted in an annuity or someone sold you a bad life life insurance policy. Don't don't just uh, uh, follow commercials and sell those things. We don't sell any of that nonsense. Uh, all we do is offer you unbiased help, free, uh, whether you're a client or not. Uh, we always do the life planning stuff for clients for free. But if you just have a question, call us. We don't have a we don't have a dog in the fight with this stuff. We just know what the truth is. And we want to share it with you. So 855-732-5932. Now look, uh, you can get a hold of me here too on Twitter. Uh, at TJ Razor is how you find me. And you can email me, temporarygrasset.com. Find me on Twitter. But look, there's there's a uh, there's a reason uh, why people find me. Because uh, I'm going to, uh, if you, if you uh, ask me, I will send you to this wonderful community uh, that talks about, like all the stuff that we, we talk about here at Revere, right, on the videos, Don and... Uh, Hunter and Alex, uh, there's a community on Zoom that's doing that. They're taking our work, they're talking about it, they're making it their own, and they've come up with these amazing charts. They're called White Bar, and they're it's free. Like, and they update them, and they I'm telling you, the, they're doing it in ThinkScript. There, there's uh, I don't we don't own the community. Uh, it's just uh, I'll say fans of Revere. Uh, they're just friends of Revere. And they are wonderful human beings there. Uh, and uh, texting throughout the day on Zoom, sending pictures, updates, uh, discussing strategy. And if you want to get a hold of them, um, th there's no like name for the group or anything. It's just uh, good folks like uh, Captain Dan, uh, Mark from Buffalo, Coach. Uh, I think that maybe uh, uh, Catherine's in there. I, there's a bunch of folks in there. But anyway, timrograsset.com, 855-732-5932. I'm uh, more than happy to help you uh, make an introduction there. So look, tonight's session with you, I'm hoping it doesn't go long. Uh, and I, I know I'm in control, control of that, right? Uh, but it's based, what I'm going to talk to you is based on, oh, what happened here? Maybe I can get it to go back. Nope. Uh, this is having trouble with my, um, with my, uh, with my browser here for some reason uh, this afternoon. But look, this class, so I'm not, it's not a class, the strategy I'm about to teach you is based upon this video 
It's called the trading plan for 2021. But there's a second one. I called it the most powerful strategy ever created. And I'm going to link to both of those videos uh, in uh, what you see on the website and on YouTube. You'll have this class and the powerful strategies. There'll be two classes. It was supposed to be here, but somehow it's not there right now. I'm not sure why. So anyway, uh, those are long form classes. Those are, um, uh, you know, just these long, uh, they're not abbreviated like today's session will be, and they give you the long form and the down and the down uh, deep detail of how all these trading strategies came about that you and I talk about night after night. So uh, with that, let's get started. So remember, stock news and market builders, these videos, they're for what? Your edification purposes only. They're never to be misconstrued as advice. One of my advice, seek advice, all you have to do is, in fact, to give us a call. So look, before I tell you that the market's going to hell in a handbasket, we're going lower, dive, dive, dive. I've mentioned this many a times, uh, but it's nice when it happens like this and I can just show you in one day. The market takes back about half of the gains it gives you, okay? You have to understand that. Time of memorial, you can put a daily chart up, a weekly chart up, a monthly chart up. Heck, you could put up a five-minute chart, and you would see that over time of memorial, what the market gives you, the market takes back at least half. Now, I said at least. It's just a matter of when. And so here, you can see from high to recent low, what do we do? That's a 50% retracement. That makes complete sense. Does that mean we're stopping here? No. No, it sure heck doesn't. I'll show you that in a second. The NASDAQ. Well, we only got back to a 618 retracement there. Well, NASDAQ's been stronger. And here, and we're going to dive into that in a second. But if the a couple of key stocks uh, give way, and I don't know if they're going to, look for a 50% retracement here, if not more. And then how about the YMC? Now, does the market have to stop at a 50% retracement? No. And when, let me tell you something about this, too. That's really important for you to understand. When the dam breaks on the 50%, like when you break the 618 and you break the 50%, you're, you're going lower, boss. And so you need to look for that next line in the sand. And if it's like a 200 day, maybe, you know, you can see that uh, the YMs didn't do it here. And then um, how about how about the RTY? This This is just... I mean, look at this, 50% gives way and boom, tumbling. And so, look, these are just lines on the chart. You got to understand that. Like the lines on the chart don't have to do anything. And so it's just that most algorithms are programmed to the lines on the chart. So when you break those lines on the chart, it's a really big deal. The algorithmic behind couldn't stop it. And so um, you want to pay attention to that type of stuff. So, but today's a really, today's a wrap. Like, don't don't let anyone fool you. Today it was only down 1.35%. In the big scheme of things, it's no big deal. No, no, today, today, my friends, was a wrap. Today was, let me show you a couple of things here on this S&P chart that you should be aware of. So here is the high at 40, 46.37. Well, more, right? 130 some points lower. And then I sent the fellows a text. I don't want to show you this. So uh, we'll keep it at a five minute chart. So T I C K S. Is it ticks or tick? I think it's the tick. Tick. I use the tick, right? I put this on a five minute chart. This is a big deal. Right around um, now, you can see that my charts are uh, central time zone here. So they end at 1500, not four o'clock, like you, you might be thinking. Minus 1300, and I'm like, well, I wonder if it's text the fellows. And I'm like, yeah, let me text the fellows. Around 1405, I sent out a text, hey, do some really healthy selling. This is some of the biggest selling in a long time. And so, minus what, 14, we'll just call that 1400, then you got a minus 1500 right at the close. So, just look at this though. Mine it like at 14, 1400, 1405 time frame, okay, 1410. What were the SPs doing at that time? So, we're going to get, we're still on the same five minute chart. So at 1345, here's four, right up in here, you're really only down about 10 points. And I know it's a big reversal, but on the day you were only down about 10 points. You went down like 50, 60 more points when you got the, just that big tick warning. And so if you're able to set an alert on your platform, set it for minus 1000 ticks, right? That, that most people are, are generally long the market. That gets your attention. You know, like a minus now, everything between 600 and um, negative 600, positive 600, 
That's nothing. That's noise. Minus 800, minus 1,000, that's real buying and selling, or plus 800, plus 1,000, real, real buying there. And like real selling. And once you started getting these really low ticks, man, either nothing can sustain that, not even the strongest stocks. And you saw that when Tesla gave away. So the tick is like this, it's like a, a hurricane, not a hurricane, um, a tornado warning siren that might be in your town. We have them out here in Texas. Um, yeah, like the ticks are that. And so it's kind of like a progression here. And so let me show you this, how it worked uh, the last couple of days. So um, S, let's just use uh, SPY on a daily chart. So SPY just, you know, hey, no big deal. Here's holding support the 21 yesterday we break support the 21 but it's not a lot of damage right and look if we do it on a week like like, like tim wharton god that's that's still an uptrend where i come from yeah i, I don't disagree but if you really want to know the damage like well, what's going on i encourage everyone to do this i hadn't done this till um I, I usually do it all the time i hadn't done it till this morning i told the fellas in the morning call i said this is some real damage here and so what you're looking here at the RSP is an equal weight S&P. So whereas Tesla might be like weighted more than another S&P 500 stock and Apple's going to be weighted more and, and Amazon's going to be weighted more and Google's going to be weighted more and Microsoft's going to be weighted more, the RSP just equals it all out. And on an equal footing, this market's been in trouble for uh, a little bit. This market's been in trouble for a little bit longer than you might and might think and then like the same thing with the qqq right q's have been super duper strong can't beat back the q's apple and tesla held up the market and microsoft held up the market yesterday but when you do uh qqew which is the equal weight nasdaq you can see that you you've been in some trouble for some quite quite some time and so well that's all well and good tim stop high you know no, nothing's worse than being a hindsight trader right or the person that comes on a video and tells you what happened in the past look i can i need to use the past here for a couple of minutes so i can help protect you in the future and if we can agree to that i'm about to show you this set of charts and now most people that follow my work closely you know you know what this charting you know what this charting is right it's 3 atr and so but there's a ton of new folks so just bear with me as we get everybody on the bus and then we start moving forward so here is the mean and then there's a plus one plus two plus three atr well what does that really represent here's the mean the 21 exponential moving average and over the last 21 days this qqew moves about 1.74 one dollar and 74 cents $1.75. And so this plus one is one, you know, one one dollar and seventy four cent zone, two one dollar and seventy four cent zones, three one dollar and seventy four cent zones, and it's the same thing minus one, minus two, and minus three. And what this gives you is a visual representation, a fact based book. It is something overbought, oversold is a state. Listen, listen to this phrase very closely. Oversold is a state of mind. Okay, well Tim, what do you mean by that? Well, look here. The last time you saw this in kind of action in September, just because it hits minus three ATR, don't mean it ain't done going down. But it's oversold. And remember, I told you that oversold is a state of mind. But overbought is something that you can use to high probability, and that's what I like. I'm a probabilistic trader, an investor. I I'm looking for high probability moments and time to take action. When those moments don't work out, I I want to get out of the trade. And so let me show you. So we'll just use um, QQQ. Right. Well, let's start with spy. We'll just go, we'll go with spy here. So, what would you do? Like, there's a couple of ways you can handle these charts. At um, at plus, you know, if you buy the mean right from a five eight trigger. Well, what's a five eight trigger? Well, you got a five eight trigger on these uh, white bar charts here. Let's see. Well, there was a trigger here, but then it sold off. Let's see. Well, give me a white bar trigger right here. So five. 5.8 cross here, right? A 5.8 cross here. And by the way, all those white bar charts are free. If you're in that Zoom group, there's a discussion group with ThinkScript. They'll give you everything that you're looking at on my chart. Matter of fact, I don't have the most up-to-date white bar charting, okay? I do not. They do, though, okay? So now, like, let's look at um, Tesla, Tesla, Apple, doesn't matter, any one of them. So here's like a white bar, uh, right? You get the 5.8 cross, and then away you go. So now, well, how can you use that information to your advantage with a 5A cross and these ATR charts? So, like, if you get, uh, here's Tesla on this ATR chart, on a daily chart, 
So you can, you can buy at the mean or a 5A cross, whatever your trigger is, okay? So let's, but for me, it's the mean. I like to buy at the mean. I believe that's my lowest risk to entry point because if I start closing below the mean and below minus one ATR, a trade's probably most likely not going to work out in my favor. But if I buy at the mean, it gives myself a little time to dance and see if we can get up to plus two or plus three ATR. You can do a number of things here. It's up to you what you decide. So how about at plus two ATR, uh, you know, if you buy at the mean and when you hit plus two ATR, you sell half, if not three quarters. And then when you get to plus three ATR, if you get the plus three ATR, you sell the rest, right? We'll just say the rest of it, okay? And then, well, Tim, what if we never get the plus three ATR? Well, if you undercut the plus two ATR, you get rid of the rest, right? Makes sense. Or if you go back to the mean, you can always revoke. How you handle your risk and your position size is completely up to you. Remember, these videos are for what? Gratification purposes only. One advice, need advice, seek advice. Remember that quote, seek advice. Call America's fiduciary right here at any store, 855-732-5932. So now back to these charts. Oops, long chart. So now, what like what would you do in this Tesla example? Well, like right here was a buy off the mean back in um, September. And then there's plus two ATR. You could sell there, right? You could sell that half and then let the rest run. Well, there's three ATR and then you're out, right? But Tim, it made this incredible move. You don't have to sell it all. You can trail up the stop. There's a number of ways to handle these types of situations. And that's why that community that talks about the work that we do at Revere, that's why they're so helpful because they're all living in real time, right? And so then, well, what if you only buy and sell at the mean? Well, look, the daily charts provide you with a lot of noise. And if this is too much noise, like let's get back to the uh, spy here. If that's too much, like this is too much back and forth, I'm going to encourage you to do this. Set your charts to weekly. So let's go to weekly here. Let's go to weekly, okay? And so when I go to a weekly chart, I'm looking for the same kind of setup, right? But on my chart here, what do I have? 615, there's a there's a 5-8 a cross indicated by that right bar there. And there's a little bit more to it, but that group can explain it to you. Again, I don't, we don't own the group at Revere. They're just friends of Revere. And they're, they're, they're more than willing to help explain it. But this is a weekly chart, right? And so from here, to he, oops, let me change my, my tool. Here we go. So from here to here, that's still, almost, come on, man. That's like a 50% gain. And that's just spy. It's a weekly chart, and you and and like you don't really get shaken out of this thing because you haven't closed below. Um, maybe here you did, but you got right back in. Uh, you close. I got, got to look at that close. Do you close below the mean? And and you really haven't. And so here's spy, still looking for a weekly close below the mean. You still don't have it, right? And so, but you're kind of at, you're kind of at that zone right now. Like, are we going to close below the mean, the weekly mean? I don't know. Everything reverts back to the mean. These weekly charts, I think, are like my best friend. Because if you're if you're working, you got kids, um, you're super duper busy, uh, just with, with whatever, or you don't like this. You don't like look at this daily chart. You don't like this. You don't you don't like all of this. May I introduce you to my friends' weekly charts? And weekly charts, I think, are beautiful. And and if you bought like, and you're just waiting for your signal, right? So your signal here, um, you get it back in uh, June. Or like, let's say you missed it. You're on vacation. Well, there's, you don't, you can just buy the 21. Okay, well, are you still on the trade? Yeah, because it didn't really close below the 21. You're still on the trade, you're still on the 21. And then you're just, away you go. Well, does that work with like this week one, the down? So we're still on weeklies, right? Yeah, a couple of white bars here. Uh, but you got some weak closes. So if you want to, I, look, find the down, good luck. But you can do it. You get a white bar here, you're, but you're below the moving averages. Now the moving averages are stacked in your favor in these two weeks right here. And when do you finally start closing below the mean? This week right here. But that's a 30% gain. And so I highly encourage you to use these charts. And so um, in conjunction with each other. So now back to the ATR chart. So here's that. Here's the, how that looks on an ATR chart. Do you get to the third ATR? Yeah, back in April. So here is a the mean right come down to the mean or cross the mean that's back in may close below the mean here okay that week so let's say you sold it here you know you didn't ca catch it right at the mean 
still up 4%. Let's say you get right back in. Like in this, what I'm demonstrating to you is that you don't need to trade everything. You can do this with individual stocks. You can do this with the indices like we're talking about. And the Dow's like, not my favorite, right? And so like, look at here. So you get back in, let's say you do it. But here's the thing, like the whole words, let's say you do it. Are you going to? Like, what is your process? What gets you in? What gets you out? And what, what are your trailing stops? And then do you honor them? But you, have, you only you, like you can only answer that. I can't. But I can tell you that when you're, when you're using this type of charting, now you're trading with the probabilities. The probability is that when you go up at plus two ATR, plus three ATR, for the markets to start to move lower, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It doesn't mean the economy is bad. It doesn't mean that the government's bad. It doesn't mean anything's bad. Just the Philadelphia Eagles are bad right now, but we're going to get better. And so here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can always buy back the mean. And there's always something that's going to be trading, right, that you can trade. So like here, let's go QQQ, right? So one's like here's Q crossing, you know, big sell-off this spring. Uh, we crossed the mean here. We don't close below the mean. No, we recover the mean, recover the mean, we recover the mean. Okay, right here is where we, so we're here. Let's say we buy it somewhere here. And now here's the first time we close below the mean. That is a 67% move. And, and by the way, you're just using the mean. You're like, well, Tim, you said sell a plus three ATR. Great, sell a plus three ATR and then reload in the mean. But you got to do it. Like you, you, you have to do that. Like you have to actually take the action. And, and, and so I'm, I'm all about simplicity. I get made fun of occasionally for my simplistic takes on things like using weekly charts or, um, oh, I don't know, how about something as simple as a 5-8 a cross? And you can screen, like this is the whole beauty of, uh, of William O'Neill and, and IBD. Like you can screen for the best growth stocks possible, just trade those. You could just trade your favorite stocks. Like, man, I'm really into Tesla. I love Tesla. Like, like if that's you, fantastic. And, and or or like maybe you're someone who like let's look at Amazon. Amazon's done nothing all year. Like this is a day. Let's get a daily chart here of Amazon and let's set it to year to date. Okay, so we're setting it at year to date, and we're gonna get it scrunched up here. If you give me a second, so here's the begin all the way to the left. Okay, that's the start of the year, and this is how trading has evolved on this ATR chart. And look, this is okay. Here's the mean. We, we're, we're, we're going to sell at plus two HR. That's, oh, sorry. Let's see if I get that on the screen for you. It's about four or 5%, it, but it just, this is drips and drabs, man. Here, get, you get up to two plus eight, you get up 4%. And then uh, did you trail a stop? Like it's all hindsight. And would you have done it? Is Amazon the best merchandise? Just trying to demonstrate that it works on not the best merchandise, but Amazon on a weekly chart. Let me show you this. Amazon's just consolidating those massive gains from last year. And so when you look at Amazon now, you know, okay, well, let's let's do this. Here, here crosses the mean back at the end of March of 2020. Okay, three, three ATR, that's 30%. Well, Tim, you said it, maybe two ATR, sell half, sell three quarters and let it ride. You're letting that ride and just trailing up a stomp. Okay, well, how about a more recent, uh, move across the mean, like right here, move across the mean to plus two ATR, it's 11%. Like there's a number of ways you can do this with a number of stocks you can do this. But the bottom line is it's a, you need, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, you, you need a process, something that you can articulate that when X happens, you're going to do Y because of this, because of this data set, because of this fact. And so like here's Amazon, yeah, white bar, white bar, great. But that's a this is a weekly chart here. So let's see, uh, white bar. Let's say you got it at the top of the range. Boom, that's seven percent. Okay, seven percent. Last couple of weeks is a lot better than what the markets did over the month of November, right? Better what they did uh, leading leading into December. So look, I, th there's a lot you can do by taking the stocks that you know and love, or just the indices. And then, and then using the mean, a five uh, moving average crossing over an eight, or you could even do 521. There's a, there's a number of ways you can do it to suit yourself. And then, and then taking profits at plus two or plus three HR, there's a number of things you could do. 
and and look, let's look at a grotesque example here. How about crude oil, right? You don't think crude oil hits three turn? Like how many people were telling you crude was going to a hundred? Okay, well here it hits three ATR back in October. Oh, but it tripped. I mean, it, it hit October. It hit 82. It got as high as 83, maybe 85. And then it's all about probabilities. It's let's look at TLT because uh, look, I, there also the other thought too here is that bonds really didn't explode. Uh, DXY hasn't really exploded. Hard to know if this market, if this sell-ups really got traction without those two um asset class is moving let's look at tlt again though so here's tlt what is t even bonds three hr and come back now these aren't at three hr but what do you think is going to happen at three hr they're going to make it they don't have to come back to the mean like th th there's no law written that has to come back to the mean but it's it's probabilistic that it's going to it doesn't have to do with the first day look these are zones yeah, some people are looking for exacto and it's the market it's 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 a imagine walking into a bazaar and people are bidding on things. It's a market. Anything can happen. And so, but if you trade with your rules, so let's go back to SPY. Did you have to suffer this? Like if you're an SPY trader and you bought this mean and you know, okay, here we are. I mean, do you know how rare it is that the indices hit the three ATR? Trail up a stop. But you got into this good, but Tim, it went right back up to the to the three ATR and hit, and I would have missed. I would have missed a move. Well, that, my friends, that, my friends, is what? What is that when you're when you say I would have missed the move? What is that? Yeah, you've got the FOMO. You got the fear, like there's all those delta variants now. You got the FOMO variant. FOMO, FOMO, not FOMA. FOMO. You got the FOMO variant, and and that's hard because everyone's had it. I've had it. It doesn't mean I don't still get it. Like you're like, oh, I want to be a part of that. Like every, it's, man, it's. It's we're humans. Together we are humans. And so how do you fight that? Well, you just go find a setup that's potentially at the mean. Like, how about TLT? Super duper boring, right? But here was TLT back on 1124. Let's go let's, let's go to our friend uh TLT. Let's get a daily chart going here. And let's see what TLT said. Did TLT nah dude it gave us one right here? What a horrible looking chart that is. <laughs> just almost untradeable, right? I'm telling you, things get cleaner on weekly charts, get easier. But hopefully, I'm making my point here. And then here's the other thing too. Uh, so if I if I haven't clearly articulated what I'm trying to articulate, you're know, like Tim. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Look, I get it. A lot of these charts are new. Uh, trading plans are hard. Looking back in hindsight, what you would have done seems easy, too easy. But what I'm trying to do is help you understand. What what's going to happen? How you take action today to prevent this to prevent this type of slide from happening to you tomorrow, right? Like some of you don't like this. You're 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 like, well, this. I mean, look, in the whole scheme of things, what is this? So mine is about a five percent move from high to low. That's like nothing, right? But if you had options on that and got wiped out by it, yeah, that's something. Or if you had a five percent position on it, you know, go five percent, that doesn't feel good. Could you prevent that? Yeah, don't buy three ATR. Don't buy plus two ATR. So the, the one time it works out of three, you're just going to form a bad habit. Buy, if you have a rule that says you buy from the mean, maybe up to one ATR. That's your rule. If you miss it, you miss it, and you move on. There's like 5,000 other stocks. You can do it. You can find something else that's meeting your criteria. But what happened, just to pretend this says something sexy like Lucid or uh, Tesla or whatever, whatever sexy sock du jour you're into. And you don't you don't have to have this, right? This doesn't have to happen to you. And look, I like to, I mean, I like Amazon, I like Tesla, like I, I reference that, I think it's cool, man. I like Tesla. Uh, but look, I, you know, this is when everybody's talking about it. You know, and you're like, well, it lingered up there for a number of days and this great move. Yeah, but, you know, if you bought here and sold here, I never begrudge anybody who makes money. I, I mean that sincerely. If you're doing something that you're like, Tim, I do the exact opposite of you and I'm fat, dumb and happy and I'm making a ton of money. I applaud you. But but most and and, and but most people and I, I used to meet a bunch of people. They don't need haphazard. 
they need consistent. They need, they, they need something that's, uh, that can be applied, reapplied, made better in their mind, and then just worked, but always having that base of probabilistic trading. And so here you go, Tesla, let's come back to the mean. Sorry, you get it. How about, man, I think my cousin was talking about, no, my nephew, pardon me, he's not my cousin, he's my nephew, does the Robox, right? Robox is at the mean. If you've missed this move in Robox, it's at the mean. Well, what do you mean it's at the mean? This is a, does it, could it go lower? Yes, but is this a low risk entry point? Not advice. Let me tell you what, not advice. Educational, I'm accentuating points from earlier. I cannot stress this enough. But like for me, this is where uh, you do the low risk entry, right? You know, and I haven't done this in a while. I'll break, I'll break from the class for one second. Let's do a DWAC update, DWAC. I said this thing is going back to 10, did that up in the 60s. Not, not, not there yet, but uh, <laughs> up seven percent on a, on a, on a down day like this. So that's the, the that's the political spac um, we talked about. So look, uh, what do you do here moving forward? Know where you are in time and space. Having situational situational awareness is critical. So look, um, the market likes to punish long. <laughs> What's the old adage? The uh, market is an equal opportunity dream destroyer. So it, it, there's a really good chance that if we break this 50% level, that we're probably going to come down here. And I would think 40, um, 4450, uh, 4400 is your next stop. Do you come down here? Well, look, you can't have two good, uh, three three bad averages. One like is the Nasdaq, which is uh, which is higher at the 618, better than all the others. It is. But nothing bad is going to happen unless Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Tesla start to break down. If they don't, it's really it, it, it's hard for me to see how the Nasdaq uh, breaks down because you've seen the power of those stocks. You can say, well, that's a problem that all that power is concentrated in those names. That's for another discussion. Okay, so uh, we are at really interesting times here, and I think it's important to note that um, that if this 4,500 level gets broken. Uh, it's probably a quick flush to the 4450 level. And then, um, I mean, this is a daily chart, and that's all the way. We're just going to call that 4300. Does the S&Ps have 200 more points lower into it to give back all of this gain? This is normal. Right here, what happened today is normal. Okay? This is to be expected. So let me just think, let me just accentuate that point. If this is to be expected, right? And I want you to go back and do the work. I want you to go back in the S&Ps and, and from high to low, from every high to every low in the daily or weekly chart, just do the drill I did here. Do, get, get your FIB levels going and look at all the givebacks that are 50%. And when they give back the 50% level, they're going, they're going, you know, 200 points lower. Like you gotta understand that every, for those of you that don't think in S&P points, every S&P point is equal to roughly eight Dow points. Today was a route, man. Like that that hundred point reversal, <laughs> you know, from in the markets. That's over, you know. That, that's a big old Dow number reversal, right? You got to understand just how severe that was today. But is this is this it? Interesting to see. Uh, but look, what I was getting to is so understanding where we are in time and space. It gets ex exceptionally easier when you use these ATR charts. So you don't have to worry about percentages above the 21 or percentages above the eight or anything. Just like, okay, we're at plus one ATR. So probably can, then the normal move is mean to plus two ATR. All right, we're going to sell half, sell three quarters. We're going to let the rest ride. Okay, we're at three ATR. I know what's happening next. It's just when, right? It's just when. And maybe it's one of those situations where the mean catches up and that's fine too. But you'll, you'll never be caught unawares. If you just do what I described, does it mean you're not going to lose money? Let me be really clear about that. Doesn't mean that because you are in control, right, of your um, of your position sizing and what you're trading, right? But that's why there is risk controls with position size, and that's why there is screening for some of the best stocks because what the best stocks and this is the brilliance of uh, Bill O'Neill, what the best stocks do give you is consistency when the rules are applied. See, that's like DWAC up 7% today. That thing's not consistent. But the best merchandise with the best fundamentals, with growing sales, growing earnings, and to support 
they tend to act more consistently and you get into a rhythm and a flow and then I'm telling you life gets a lot easier. And then when you want help, you're like, Tim, you kind of lost me there. Is there anybody I can talk to? Well, heck yeah. Just call, email any one of us, just call 855-732-5932. So with that, I'll give you one second. Oh, I had a cough and I cheated and I looked at my notes. I just wanted to make sure that I covered everything I wanted to cover. Hopefully this was coherent. Uh, if you liked it, I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. I don't know how long we've been going, but listen, thank you, stock nerds. I love you with all my heart. I, I We are here because of you. Our, our just People have been watching our videos since 2014. Huge thank you for new to us. Can't, spend, can't thank you enough for spending time with us. And so listen with that. Hunter has a video tomorrow night. Don's got the 20 over 21 of the podcast on Friday, which is going to be a ton of fun. Man, I'll tell you what, the markets are exciting right now. And um, we'll see. Like, does if tomorrow's close is poor, does that set the tone for the rest of the year? And what is the dollar and what are bonds doing? In relation to that so lots to talk about and hopefully help you navigate these turbulent markets with that see you at the next update